morning sun passed through the east-facing window and zeroed in on the empty rye whiskey bottles, redirecting laser-like beams directly at my face. As a kid, I had done similar to thousands of unsuspecting ants in the woods behind my childhood house. It is incredible what the sun's rays, when intensified through a magnifying glass, can do to an anthill, or human flesh as I was now discovering. Maybe this would be the next phase of my sworn revenge? I hadn't thought of this method before this morning. The sun and whiskey bottle provided me, not so subtly, another idea for inflicting pain and suffering. I felt it on my left cheek, searing a hole through my skin. The smell of burning flesh. Yes, this is perfect. An excellent refinement to the current process, but all toward the same final act, death. The results matter more than the methods to get there. Still, the longer he suffered, the more gratifying it would be for me, and I needed to consider that. I turned my face to escape the heat, which only invited the rest of my body to wake up and join in on the fun. I had somehow navigated my way to the brown leather couch after finishing off the last bottle of whiskey. It was only eight feet from the dining room table where I made the night's last stand. I don't remember making the conscious decision or effort to get there. My throat felt like I had gargled with highly coarse-grained sandpaper, and my tongue was fused to the roof of my mouth. That reminded me of more childhood times when my friends and I would dare each other to lick the school flagpole in sub-freezing temperatures. The front of my t-shirt was stained by patches of blood and semi-dried vomit. A large, wet spot covered the front of my shorts and residual liquid continued to the uncovered portion of my legs. I had been resourceful enough to make it to the couch, but continuing to the bathroom was too much to ask. The stench of the urine-vomit combo sent shock waves to my stomach and almost caused me to add fresh content. This is how my revenge is supposed to be. It isn't clean, and it's not easy or orderly. Some say revenge is sweet. Not in my case. It's messy and pungent and brutal, as much so as what forced me to make the vow in the first place. I want to feel all of it, know what I'm inflicting as if I am the recipient. I decided a few weeks ago to concentrate on the pain and suffering I was administering and look inside myself each step of the way. To evaluate who I am. What I've become. To ask what brings a man with a seemingly everyday life to the point where revenge consumes his every waking moment and haunts his dreams. Have others in my shoes felt similar? Or do they, acting on pure rage, seek revenge focused only on the target, taking no time or effort to look inside themselves? I can understand that. It's where I started. The benefit of rage-filled revenge is that it is carried out quickly, riding on urgent and concentrated emotion, and then it's done. Although my approach takes longer to complete, it has allowed me to see so much. Provided me clarity and knowledge about myself and my wife. Yes, it is my wife's death that I seek to avenge. Part of my inward look includes my life with her, our relationship, our dreams, plans, and those secrets that we both kept inside. Maybe one day thinking we'd open up and share with each other but now unable to do so. It is she that brings me to this depth. Would she have approved? I looked out the open patio door. It was a beautiful morning. I could see that even in my current state, maybe because of it. Blue skies painted perfectly around the downtown Los Angeles high-rise buildings. Best view in the city, was what the leasing agent told me about my top-floor apartment. And he was right, especially this morning. I remember when that mattered to me. When I spent as much time sitting on my patio as I did indoors. I have always preferred the nighttime view. I feel like a superhero, watching over the city. My perch on top of the world, protected by the cover of night that the daytime view doesn't offer. This morning challenged that preference. Almost a calling for me to come out of the darkness, to show myself, the new self, the transformation of one who looks deep inside and challenges his beliefs, values, and place in the world. The one thing I did right last night was that I hadn't shut the patio doors, so at least fresh air was fighting its way into my apartment. I seized a moment of confidence from that decision to stand up from the couch. The move made me dizzy, and I sat back down as if I had consciously decided to do so. The confidence vanished, but a sharp pain shot from my right hand in its place. I looked down to see stucco, bone, and dried blood covering the back of my right hand and the inside of my right arm. That jogged my memory, and I replayed the revenge-filled scenes from last night. I had regressed, brought back the rage, and sacrificed my growth and inner peace. The evidence convincing it was time for a change. How long could I carry this on? 
when would I know the right time to move to the next phase? I stood up again, slowly, stabilized myself while fighting off the dizziness, and successfully went to the bathroom. A gulp of water freed my tongue from its captor. I found the bottle of ibuprofen, opened it, and closed it again, deciding to live with the pain. It's all part of the process, the growth. My enlightenment. I caught the reflection of my unshaven face in the mirror. I hadn't looked at myself in weeks, not for any reason other than that I was locked in on the task at hand. Now I wanted to look, deeply. To see who I've become. Ask the same questions to the person staring back at me. Would he provide the same answers? Desire the same knowledge and clarity? Could he come out of the darkness? Looking in the mirror today inspired me. I found the razor next to the sink where it has sat, unused, for months, and went to work on my face and head. What I saw in the mirror 30 minutes later was a vast improvement. I scooped the greasy, brownish-gray hair out of the sink and into the nearby garbage can, not caring about the portion that didn't quite reach its destination. I cranked the shower water as hot as I could stand on my good hand, stripped down, and stepped inside to let the water drops pelt me into recovery. Showered in my clothes from the previous night safely stored in a heavy-duty garbage bag, I discarded the bag down the 15th floor trash chute conveniently located in the trash room a few doors from my apartment. I re-entered fully energized. I thought I was ready last night and tried to finish the job, but it wasn't in the cards. In the end, I couldn't do it, not because I felt empathy or remorse. On the contrary, I decided he hadn't suffered enough for his sins against my wife, and me. This morning, I was ready to move on. To complete my work. Maybe it was the morning view, the clean shave, the shower, the returning rage, or a combination of all of them. Whatever the case, I was prepared for the final act, and right now. No cover of darkness. What better way to finish the job than to do so for the whole city to see? Why waste this beautiful morning when it was calling me to be free? To enjoy the fresh air, the sunshine, and all the optimism they had to offer. I stepped out onto the patio, took a deep breath, and went over my plan one last time. My goal, the same as last night, was to end his life like he had ended my wife's. To inflict the same pain, suffering, and death he had dealt her. The first two were complete, so it was time for the third. The only detail I would change is the time of day. The patio faced east and stretched the length of my apartment, probably 30 feet, and wrapped a few feet around to the north side of the building with enough room to tuck a small, round table and two chairs at the end. The railing that protected those who needed it was approximately 5 feet from the patio door and waist high. I grabbed the top bar of the barrier with both hands. It was an inch or so in diameter, and its metal was warm to the touch in the morning sun. Last night it was slippery due to the moisture in the air, but today that wouldn't be a problem. I took another deep breath and climbed onto the lower of the two cross beams that horizontally supported the railing. It was only knee high, so I could climb onto it with both feet and support myself by leaning on my thighs against the top railing. I released my grasp on the upper bar, stretched my arms out in front of me, and took it all in for a few seconds. The view, the gentle breeze, and the sunshine. The next step would be more challenging. I put my right foot on the top bar and gripped the bar with both hands. I brought my left foot to the top bar, removed my hands from the bar, and steadied myself with my left hand on the side wall of the patio. Standing on the top railing, relaxed and calm, I appreciated all the beauty of the day and took one final deep breath. Maybe revenge is sweet, after all.